Hello and welcome. India has reported more than 4,000 deaths due to COVID complications. 4,000 deaths in a day for the first time. This is over and above the 4 lakh daily cases that have been reported for the fourth time in a week. A day after reporting the world's highest daily surge, India recorded 4 lakh 1,078 cases on Saturday and 4,187 deaths, taking the total number of deaths to 2.38 lakh. And that's not all. India could see a staggering 1 million deaths from COVID-19 by the 1st of August. This is according to an editorial in the British medical journal Lancet. And if that outcome were to happen, the, they say that it would be the Modi government that is responsible. India squandered its early successes in controlling COVID-19. The editorial says until April, the government's COVID-19 task force had not met in months. The Lancet editorial quoted the Institute for health metrics and evaluation an independent global health research organization and giving its projection for this 1 million deaths by the 1st of August. The Science Journal says that India must now restructure its response. The success of that effort will depend on the government owning up to its mistakes, providing responsible leadership and implementing a public health response that has science at its heart. It says the government must increase vaccine supply, have an equitable distribution system that covers not just urban but also rural and poorer citizens. It says the government must publish accurate data in a timely matter, saying that at times the Modi government has seemed more intent on removing criticism on Twitter than trying to control the pandemic. And amidst a terrifying oxygen supply crisis in India, the Supreme Court has constituted a national task force to assess and recommend how to ensure the supply and distribution of oxygen for the entire country. The task force has on it some of India's top medical experts and doctors from across the country as its members. It will have the cabinet secretary to the union government as its convener. But they have quite a task set out for them going by this report from Rajasthan. Outside the RUHS hospital, COVID patients, some of them critical and in need of oxygen, waiting to get admission. But Jaipur's biggest COVID hospital is full to capacity and it's becoming a challenge for the hospital to take in new admissions. Ma'am, actually, you have oxygen in one day, three, three, four, four, four. My mother, I'm going to two days, three days, Jaipur. I'm going to the hospital. There's no sound. There's no SMS. There's no sound. How much time is it? Four hours. We've been waiting for it. The Rajasthan government admits oxygen is its biggest challenge. They say given the active cases touching nearly 2 lakhs, the state needs 615 empty of oxygen and they're getting much less, 270 only from the center. Condition kafi critical bani hui hai. Bahar ki sthiti agar hum gate ki dekhte hain to ambulance line mein lagi hui hai. Uske andar bhi jo patients hain unka 40% saturation hai, kisi ka 60% saturation hai. और उनको इमीडिएटली ऐसे पेशेंट्स को आईसीयू की रिक्वायरमेंट होती है। अब आईसीयू की रिक्वायरमेंट जो अभी आईपीडी में पेशेंट्स आ रहे हैं, उनमें से करीब 70-80 परसेंट पेशेंट ऐसे आ रहे हैं जिनको कि इमीडिएटली आईसीयू की रिक्वायरमेंट होती है। वो अभी फिलहाल उनको आईसीयू के हिसाब से कैटर करना बड़ा daily requirement and reserve of 48 hours. I mean, it is, it is the playing with the life of somebody. Yeah. Till we, with us, we have reserve of 48 hours plus daily requirement, we will not take new admission. To deal with the crisis, the state government has given directions that no patient should be turned away from the hospital and at least primary treatment and day care facility will be set up. But the government's biggest challenge still remains to provide oxygen for a state that's now literally gasping for breath. In Jaipur, Harsha Kumari Singh, NDTV. And the Mumbai model was praised by the top court because the number of cases in Mumbai has been on the decline from 11,000 daily cases. There's been a 72% drop in cases within four weeks, down to less than 3,000 cases per day. So how did the BMC manage this? How are they handling the oxygen shortage situation? We tried to find out. Mumbai's civic body, the BMC, has been in mission mode from the time the first COVID wave hit the city. This is a tank to store liquid oxygen and on the other side is the oxygen generating plant. Oxygen storage tanks have been installed in 20 hospitals in May and June last year. 
13 hospitals have 13,000 kiloliters of capacity of liquid medical oxygen tanks. Two hospitals have 10,000 kiloliters capacity oxygen tanks and five hospitals have 6,000 kiloliter capacity oxygen storage tanks. Two additional commissioners have been given the responsibility to manage healthcare and oxygen needs of the city. Mumbai's oxygen supply comes from two Navi Mumbai refilling stations. In April, the diversion of Mumbai's quota of liquid medical oxygen to a few neighboring districts. बड़ा बड़ा हॉस्पिटल में डबल डबल टाकी बिठाया उसका क्या फायदा हुआ हमारा टैंकर लेट आ गया तो भी हमको प्रॉब्लम नहीं हुआ स्टॉक में, में था दिल्ली में मैं मैंने देखा उसमें एक समझ आ रहा उसको बैक टू बैक चल रहा उसका टैंकर आने के लिए लेट हो रहा अपना पास ये हमने इतना बीस टैंक बिठाया उसमें बहुत अपना को ये फायदा मिला हम थोड़ा रिस्क लिया इसमें खर्चा तो हुआ उसको लेकिन अप्रूवल लेके हम आगे जाके उसको पूरा फिट कर दिया सो so, फिट करने के बाद आठ नौ महीना तो हमको वो यूज में नहीं आया था जो यूज में नहीं आया था हमको भी लग रहा था ये वेस्टफुल एक्सपेंडिचर हो गया बट ये सेकंड वे में वो पूरा काम आ गया इसको जैसे हम हमारा कहीं भी कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं हुआ लेट टू शॉर्ट सप्लाई इन सम हॉस्पिटल लोकल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ऑफिशियल डिप्लॉइड एट रिफिलिंग फेसिलिटीज इन नवी मुंबई टू मॉनिटर एंड इंश्योर स्मूथ सप्लाई The Maharashtra government fixed a quota of 240 empty liquid medical oxygen for Mumbai. और हमने निजी अस्पतालों को भी हम सप्लाई के लिए उनको भी चैनलाइज कर रहे हैं उनकी अगर सप्लाई खत्म खत्म होता है तो हमने उनको बोल रखा कि 16 घंटे पहले हमको बता दो अगर आपका सप्लायर नहीं दे पाया तो हम आपको सप्लाई करने की कोशिश करेंगे हमारा डिस्चार्ज रेट भी बड़ा हमारा सी एफ आर भी कम हुआ जब केस फैटेलिटी रेट है जो मौत के जो संख्या है वो भी कम हो रही है द मुंबई प्लांट यूज एटमोस्फियरिक एयर टू जनरेट ऑक्सीजन Nearly 2,240 cubic meters of oxygen is generated every day. With another 16 more oxygen plants all set to be operational soon, Mumbai is fully prepared to meet the challenges of the next wave. With Pooja Bharadwaj in Mumbai Bureau Report, NDTV. And the Tamil Nadu government has now announced a two-week total lockdown from the 10th of May amidst a surge in COVID-19 cases. The order has been issued a day after the state recorded its. biggest day spike of 27000 almost 27400 new covid infections and the alukku tamilaga mosam adaiyala nanu 10 ku merpatta maavattangalla perum thottru theevarama paravittirukku dinandoram 25000 thukku merpattor pudhiya thottrala badikapadranga rendu vaarangalla indha ennike மேலும் அதிகமாகும்னு மருத்துவர்கள் சொல்றாங்க இது தொடர்பா அரசு அதிகாரிகளோடு ஆலோசனை நடத்தின கொரோனா பரவலை கட்டுப்படுத்த இன்னொரு ஊரடங்கு அவசியம்னு அதிகாரிகள் சொல்றாங்க இது தொடர்பா மருத்துவ நிபுணர்கள் கேட்டபோதும் அவங்களும் அதையே பரிந்துரை செய்யறாங்க and a news report that is important to all of us some information we must have a covid positive report is no longer needed to get hospitalized the government has said that the national policy for the admission of covid patients to hospitals has been revised to make it and i'm quoting here more patient centric the new guidelines say the requirement of a positive test for covid 19 is not mandatory for admission to a covid health facility a suspect case should be admitted to suspect wards no patient can be refused services on any count if they belong to a different city if they're not able to produce a valid id card that does not belong to the city where the hospital is located admissions to hospitals must be based on need it should be ensured that beds are not occupied by persons who do not need hospitalization furthermore the discharge should be strictly in accordance to the revised discharge policy Time now for a special report from Varanasi, which, uh, according to Hindu religious belief, is the city where many hope to die because those who die in Varanasi, it is believed, attain moksha or salvation. But the COVID pandemic has hit the city like never before. For a city where they say funeral pyres burn constantly, people can barely cope with the rising numbers of the dead. Ajay Singh reports. Sigra in Varanasi a site for death rituals at this Shiv temple on the people tree vessels would be hung as part of rituals performed for salvation but the dramatic increase in their numbers in the pandemic has taken by surprise even those who perform daily death rituals here Sankraman ke purva jo hai ekad aata tha lekin jab se sankraman hua hai tab se 12 13 aise lagatar badhte ja raha hai kabhi 14 ho ja raha hai kabhi 16 16 ho jata hai to isse aankde badhte nazar aa rahe hain 
One of the oldest shops that sells dead shrouds in Varanasi is now running out of cloth. The shop owner Ravi says the number of people coming for material for death rituals has gone up tenfold. Even bamboo for funeral buyers is in short supply. आम दिनों में जैसे महीने में दो चार छः दस हो जाते बहुत दस पंद्रह हो जाते अब क्या है कि पर डे आपका पच्चीस तीस चालीस शहर में कहीं मिली नहीं है सारे चीज की स्टॉक खत्म हो गई है हाँ सब कफन सीढ़ी इसमें पूरा सब माल खत्म हो जा रहा है कपड़े वपड़े सब कहीं कुछ नहीं मिले घाट पर सीढ़ी लकड़ी भी नहीं मिल रही है At Varanasi's birth and death registration office in the early months of the year, February and March, 2,000 plus deaths were registered. But now there has been an alarming rise in these numbers in the past month and a half. सामान्य दिनों से जो है इस समय काफी संख्या बढ़ गई है और हमारे ख्याल से हर जून से 40-50 का रहा है आंकड़ा. मृत्यु का कम से कम पर डे आ जाता है दो से ढाई सौ आज का जा रहा है. Varanasi has two ghats where the dead are cremated: Mani Karnika and Harish Chandra. But such has been the surge in death figures in this city that two temporary cremation ghats have been created to cope with the numbers. With Ajay Singh in Varanasi, Harsha Kumari Singh, NDTV. And while they do a job that many don't want to in the middle of a pandemic, crematorium workers are not counted as frontline workers. They're underpaid, they work double shifts, they're unvaccinated. Now a few young professionals started a project. They've come together to start a project to help feed and protect these crematorium workers. And they managed to raise over 15 lakh within 48 hours. Crematorium workers are risking their lives to give dignified final rights to those who died due to COVID. These workers belong to marginalized communities. They work double shift, are underpaid and are unvaccinated. But in these time of crisis, there are few people who chose to see a ray of hope. With me is Nandini Ghosh, a management consultant. She and her team last week started an initiative called Good Food Project. Uh, we actually started last week, Sunday, um, and it pretty much started on a whim. Um, uh, my friend Shrey Gupta, who, whose initiative this is also very much a part of, uh, Shrey and I decided to um, go to Nigambodh Ghat on Sunday. Um, it was a very sort of impulsive decision because I think all of us are feeling the helplessness uh, about not being able to do anything. We decided to take meals to Nigambodh Ghat for the workers there um, and we reached there in the evening. Upon speaking to the workers, they told us that you know no meals were provided for them. Uh, most of them were working day and night um, and the bodies had, the number of bodies had tripled. Uh, as compared to before COVID. Um, so that's how it started. Everybody has somehow become so entrenched uh, within the team. Uh, we have, you know, people running logistics. We have people running the sourcing. Uh, we have people, volunteers on the ground uh, today itself. We have a team in Sarai Kale Khan. We have a team in Nigambodh um, and Seema Puri, in fact. So, um, I mean, this is hardly a one-woman show. There is a very uh, uh, committed team uh, behind all of this. So, uh, how do you prioritize everything? Like, from allotment of meals to protective gears? You know, in order to allocate adequate resources in terms of uh, how many packets of food and masks, we had a team that would go one day ahead to scout these crematoriums and kabristans and understand what the situation exact was exactly, basis which we would allocate the resources on the next day. It's at a time like this where I think the citizens of India have come together um, and supporting uh, at various levels. Welcome back. Now, the Assam Chief Minister Sarvananda Sonawal and the senior BJP leader Himanta Biswaswarma met with the party chief JP Nadda and the Home Minister Amit Shah at the former Delhi residence on Saturday. A suspense builds over who will be the state's new chief minister. The BJP legislative party meeting will be held tomorrow on Sunday, and Mr. Sarma is said to be ahead in the race, according to sources. Narendra Singh Tomar and Arun Singh have been appointed as observers for this legislative meeting in Assam. I am saying that the party of the party is the first time in the party of the Bhartiya Janata Party and the party of the Bhartiya Janata Party is the first time in the party of the Bhartiya Janata Party. 
Assam is anxiously waiting to know who is going to be their next chief minister given the fact that the results uh, were announced on May 2 and it was a comprehensive victory, a comprehensive mandate for the BJP but it took one week, one week for the BJP top leadership to decide who is going to be the new Assam chief minister and what we are picking up from our sources within the BJP in both Delhi and Guwahati is that the decision has been made and it will be communicated tomorrow at the legislative party meeting in Guwahati which is going to take place around 11 a.m. when the Central Observers Party National uh, Organi Organizational Secretary B.L. Santosh as well as uh, top leader Arun Singh they would be there and they would communicate the decision made by the party remember today the party actually summoned its two top leaders from Assam incumbent Chief Minister Sarvananda Sonowal and uh, Himanta Bishwa Sharma the party's a uh, key man in the northeast of important minister in Sonwal cabinet both were called they both went in a same chartered aircraft to New Delhi they rushed there and then they had separate meetings with the party leadership JP Nadda the party president as well as union home minister Amisha both were there other party leaders were there and both the leaders were given opportunity to place their points and then there were also meetings, there was another round of meeting where both the leaders were, uh, you know, both the leaders met the central leadership face to face. So after marathon meetings, it was decided that the central observers would be sent to uh, Gohati, which is the, you know, which is the uh, format in which uh, always BJP uh, decides who is going to be the leader of their legislative party. And while many states are enforcing mini lockdowns and are struggling with curb curbing the spread of the coronavirus, what of jobs that cannot wait, that are time sensitive, that are weather sensitive, like wheat procurement? Here's a report from Punjab. This is cited as Asia's largest wheat procurement operations. And this time it was even more challenging for the state government given the COVID surge and commission agents or Artiyas resisting the direct payment of MSP to farmers. Despite the initial reluctance to DBT, the state government implemented this move, bringing smiles from lakhs of farmers like Harpreet Singh from Moga. तो जो सरकार ने अभी नियम लागू किया है सीधी पेमेंट वाला ये बढ़िया है पहले भी हमें आरतीय के थ्रू से जो पेमेंट मिलती थी वो भी शाम तक या अगले दिन मिल जाती थी अब एक आध दिन लेट हो जाती है लेकिन पेमेंट आ जाती है ये नियम बढ़िया है इनका इन एन इलेक्शन ईयर द पंजाब गवर्नमेंट डिड नॉट वांट टू एंटेगनाइज द आरतीयास सो द सॉफ्टवेयर फॉर पेमेंट वाज ट्वीक्ड टू इनेबल आरतीयास टू ट्रैक द पेमेंट्स मेड टू फार्मर्स ਨੇ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਦੇਖੋ ਜੀ ਅਜੇ ਦਿੱਕਤਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਹੈਗੀਆਂ ਜੀ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਨਵਾਂ ਨਵਾਂ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਆ ਜੀ ਕਾਫੀ ਪਰੇਸ਼ਾਨੀਆਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਜੀ ਕਾਗਜ਼ਾਂ ਪੱਤਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਬੜੀ ਪਰੇਸ਼ਾਨੀ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਅੱਗੇ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਿੱਧੀ ਪੇਮੈਂਟ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਸੀ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਦੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਵਿਦਿਨ 24 ਆਵਰਸ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਖਾਤਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੋ ਬੰਦਾ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਪਾ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਸੀ 123 ਲੱਖ ਮੈਟ੍ਰਿਕ ਟਨਸ ਆਫ ਵੀਟ ਹੈਵ ਬੀਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਕਿਊਰਡ ਸਿੰਸ April 10th and 19,946 crore rupees has been transferred to farmers. The procurement started when the second wave had just hit the state. Proper sanitization, mass distribution and other precautions were taken. 8,402 eligible people including farmers, RPRs, laborers, employees of procurement agencies and other stakeholders have been inoculated till date in the Mondays across the state. Amid all the restrictions, the government's managed to procure more than 90% of the crop. With Muhammad Ghazali in Punjab, Gauri Datta Gupta, NDTV. And finally though, let's try and end on a positive note. The Punjab Chief Minister today announced that he had offered a financial aid of 2 lakh rupees to the family of a 10-year-old school dropout. This after he saw a video of this boy selling socks at a traffic crossing in Ludhiana. It was a video that went viral of this 10-year-old Vansh Singh, uh, which prompted the chief minister to speak to officials concerned to make sure that this boy can return to school and continue his studies. He's a class 2 dropout, were to resort to selling socks on the streets to support his family. अच्छा अच्छा मेरे प्राला भी कम बंदा लोग बंद है ना इसका क्या मैसेज करता है अच्छा अच्छा